Hey, what's up everyone? I'm coming at you here and with a little different background I'm in my classroom, but uh, the math is still the same. Today what we're going to do is we're going to look at function operations. Now, uh, I'm not talking about this type of operation, of course, but we're talking about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. There's actually a fifth function operation. Did you know that? So yeah, there's actually five operations, and you have to stick around so we can show that one to you. What I'm going to do is use these three functions, g of x, f of x, and h of x. So we're going to use these three functions. You might want to jot them down because we're going to use them for just about the whole lesson. A lot of times students just write it at the top of their notes. Go ahead, I'll wait for you. Copy down f of x, g of x, and h of x. All right, are you ready to go? Let's do our first operation. How about a little subtraction? Now listen, take a look at the notation here. It says f minus g, and then there's an x. This doesn't really mean that you're going to distribute the x. Actually, it just means that you're going to do f of x minus g of x. It's just notation. When you see the x out front, it really just means take function f, take function g, put a subtraction sign between them. Pretty easy to do, but you do have to be careful because anytime you're subtracting, you always want to be thinking about um, that you're subtracting a quantity. So especially this 4x minus 2, because it's a quantity, I'm going to want to put parentheses around it. And if maybe just to be careful, I'll put parentheses around the first function also. But the key here is that you have to remember to distribute. You have to distribute that minus sign. I still see students make that mistake even in my calculus class. So let's try to clean that up right now. You're going to distribute that subtraction sign and well, of course, you just get the opposite of each term. So now I have x squared plus 3 minus 4x plus 2. And just like you should always do, you want to combine like terms. Uh, I feel like that I only have two like terms that I can combine, namely the plus 3 and the plus 2. The other terms, x squared minus 4x, they don't change. But now I end up with a plus 5, and that's my subtraction. Ready for the next operation? How about multiplication? How about f times g of x? Now again, that x out front, sometimes I see students make too much of a big deal out of that. It's just notation. It really means the same thing as f of x times g of x. Okay, in the end, we're gonna take our two functions and we're gonna put a multiplication sign between them. So here's function f x squared plus 3. Here's function g, 4x minus 2. Now, because I'm going to put a multiplication sign between these, I have to be extra careful to think of both of these as a quantity. Ah, that's right. We're going to do the FOIL method. Now, you've been doing the FOIL method with sines and cosines. Let's just do the FOIL method with good old x's. So, distribute x squared to 4x. 4x cubed, distribute x squared to minus 2. You know how to do this, right? Go ahead and finish the problem. Make sure that you're simplifying this multiplication. Sometimes students aren't sure if they're done uh, because nothing seemed to combine, but uh, that's fine. There's no like terms. So we end up with these four terms in this polynomial. Function multiplication. How about some addition? Aha, yes, I did do it. I'm going to have us add a fraction. All right, but g of x is 4x minus 2. So we'll put that down. We've got a plus sign here. And then h of x is, of course, um, the fraction, 2x over x minus 5. Now, how's it going? Can we add two, two fractions? Of course, to do that, we need two fractions. So we need a common denominator. 
we need to put a denominator under 4x minus 2. That's right, it's going to be the same denominator as we have already. It's going to be x minus 5. Now, when you put x minus 5 under there, you have to make sure that you also put x minus 5 up in the numerator. And just to let you know, you're going to have to FOIL that numerator. You're going to have to FOIL that. All right, but we can do it. So what do we have? We have a common denominator of x minus 5. We have some foiling, so that's going to give us like a 4x squared. It's also going to give us a minus 2x and a minus 20x. Are you okay if I write minus 2x and minus 20x as minus 22x? I figured you would be. So we keep foiling, we get a plus 10. We still have the uh, 2x, or excuse me, we still have this common denominator of x minus 5, and we still have our other fraction over here. Nothing happened with that yet. All that's really left to do is just add the numerators together, but the only thing you can add would be the like terms. Okay, so we're going to end up with a pretty big answer. That's all right, 4x squared minus 20x, that's the like terms, and still have a plus 10. Don't forget your common denominator, so our final answer is a fraction. Now, when you get a fraction as a final answer, it's good algebra to comment on the domain. Do you remember a couple sections ago we said that the denominator is not allowed to equal zero? So we just make this as a little statement at the end. We say that x is not allowed to equal 5. That's because the number 5 is a bad number. It makes the denominator equal zero. So our final answer is a fraction, but we also have this little domain restriction at the end. Again, that's just good algebra whenever your final answer has a denominator. What's left? You're right, division. Division. Hmm. Well, I've got good news for you. We're not going to do division. No, I don't like division. Even though I'm still going to write down g divided by h, we're still not going to do division. And why not? Because we don't have to. Dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. That's right, we're going to actually change this problem to be 4x minus 2 times, times the reciprocal, because that's what division is. Division is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, and in this case, the reciprocal of our fraction. Now be careful, you don't need a common denominator to multiply. If you want to think of this as a denominator, that's fine. You can think of it 4x minus 2 over 1. But remember, when you multiply, you just multiply across the bottom and across the top. Uh-oh, how do you multiply across the top? That's right, you have to do the FOIL method again. Now, I feel like we already did that FOIL method, but make sure you understand why I'm writing down 4x squared minus 22x plus 10. And of course, the denominator stays as 2x, okay? No common denominator when you're multiplying. But my final answer is a fraction, so I'm going to give this little extra domain restriction. What makes 2x equal 0? That's right, the number 0. So that's part of our final answer. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I thought you said, though, that there were five operations. Let's sneak into it. What's this? What's this G of smiley face? It's kind of silly, but what does it really mean? Well, that's right. It just means to plug in smiley face. Where are you plugging it in? You're plugging it into the G function. For what? For X. So if I plug a smiley face in here for X, I'm going to end up with four smiley faces minus two. Now, don't try to simplify that. It was more of just the idea that you were plugging in for x. So what would I do when I am asked to figure out g of f of x? That's right, I would plug in f of x. But what is f of x? That's right, f of x is x squared plus 3. Now, what's really going to happen here is I'm going to plug x squared plus 3 into my g equation. 
right? It's still the g equation, and my g equation has a 4, and then, well, a substitution. You're going to substitute in x squared plus 3, and then I still have this minus 2. Oh, this time I can simplify it. Yeah, you actually can distribute the number 4 to get 4x squared, uh, to get 12, and of course 12 minus 2 is 10. So I'm going to go ahead and just change it right away to 4x squared plus 10. Now what just happened down here in the second problem is our fifth operation. It's known as function composition. Function composition. When you plug a function into a function, sometimes called f of g or g of f. Remember this from Algebra 2? So f of g, that's when you plug g into f. g of f, that's when you plug f into g. I don't want to say it's backwards, but whatever function's on the inside is the one that you're plugging in to the one that's on the outside. Let's try function composition for our f and g function. So let's try f of g. Now f of g would be the same thing as f of g of x. Now that's just notation. You can write that down if you want to. Sometimes it just helps students to kind of get situated because, well, what's f of g of x? That's f of 4x minus 2. Now when it all comes down to it, I'm going to take 4x minus 2. I'm going to take 4x minus 2 and I'm going to plug that into the f function. The f function would get substituted right there for that x. Okay, now be careful because that x has a square on it. And of course there's a plus 3. But I'm going to put 4x minus 2 in for that x. Okay, into the f function. What do we have? We have another FOIL method. Okay, we have 4x minus 2 times 4x minus 2. Make sure that when you square a binomial that you FOIL it. Okay, so we're going to get 16x squared. We're going to get minus 8x and another minus 8x. And of course, we're going to get plus 4. Now, you can do that in your head if you want, or you can write it off to the side. But in the end, I need to add my like terms. So my like terms end up giving me a new number. Plus, uh, yeah, I need to add these minus 8x's. So what do we got here? 16x squared minus 16x's plus 7. Okay, of course, the most important thing here is that you plugged the g function into the f function. So what if it's written the other way? Well, if it's written the other way, you're just going to plug f into g. And you can write this a couple different ways. You can write this as g of f of x. You can also substitute what f of x equals. Of course, it equals x squared plus 3. But when it all boils down to it, I'm going to plug x squared plus 3 into the g function. Now, the g function, be careful, it just has that one little x right there. You're going to plug in for that one little x which is beside the number 4. There's still a minus 2, right? All right, so we plug x squared plus 3 in for that x. Oh, uh, this is what we did on the other page, right? This is what we did as a little preview. So we still get 4x squared, we still get 12, and 12 minus 2 is 10. I just want you to see that the two answers are different. That's strange, that's the same problem. How about we do g of h? Go, go with an h, g of h. And this is a good problem for you to try to set up. I know I'm gonna show you, but not a bad idea to pause the video and think about plugging, are you thinking about it? Plugging h into g plugging this fraction in for x. What's it going to look like?
that's the g function. Without the x, you're just going to substitute in that fraction. You're going to substitute in x minus 5. All right. You know, what, what do we got to do here? I mean, probably have to simplify this, but just take a moment. Notice I plugged h into g. Okay, now to simplify this, we have to understand that this number up front is like a 4 over 1. So you want to make sure you only multiply it to the numerator. You want to make sure that you only multiply 4 to get onto that 2x to get 8x. We also can't get past the point here that we definitely are subtracting 2 fractions. That's right, 2 fractions because the number 2 with a common denominator would be written as x over 5. So we got to do the common denominator thing so that we can subtract these two fractions. 2x minus 10. Can we combine some like terms? 8x minus the 2x. That's going to be 6x. Now, this minus sign right here also distributes with this minus 10. We have to make sure that that minus sign also goes uh, with the 2. So technically, it's going to be a positive 10. Careful about that. I almost missed that myself. But again, we're, we're distributing not actually the number 2. You know, if I was going to show this a little bit better, we're actually distributing negative 2. We're distributing a negative 2. And that's why we get a positive 10. Looks like we have a denominator, right? Your denominator is not allowed to equal zero, so that means x is not allowed to equal five. You wanna always write that as part of your answer. All right, I'm not sure we can have this much fun in, uh, in 20 minutes, but I'm gonna try. We have one more problem we're gonna do. It's a little application. Oh, that was the problem that we just did. We're gonna do a little application. Okay, now, it's not a bad application problem. Take a look at it. It's actually going to be an application of composition. What we have is a square concrete foundation. So we've got the square space. That's kind of the gray space. And it's going to end up being the base for like a large tank. Okay, now this actually happens. I did just a quick Google search, and it's not hard to find a tank that would be sitting on top of a square pad. Okay, maybe like a tank like this. Who knows what it might be holding, but we've got this tank and it's really like sitting on that square. And of course the bottom of the tank is circular and that's what we're showing here in the red color. So what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna, we wanna write a radius as a function of the square's length. We wanna write the area of the circle as a function of the radius. And then we have this function composition, A of R. And finally, we have a little extra question at the end about using the equation. Let's try this, okay? So we can do it. First of all, if I wanna write the radius as the function of the length, what I notice here is that the length is the entire distance. The radius, the radius would only be half of the distance, half of x. Okay, now what I just did there is I wrote the radius. In other words, I wrote an equation in terms of x. It just means that the radius is equal to a half of x. How about letter B? The area of the circle in terms of r. Now, I'm sure you've heard that the area of a circle is pi r squared. But that means that you wrote an equation for the area in terms of r. It just means that the area equals something with r. Here again, it equals pi r squared. All right. Well, a of r, a of r. That would be the same thing as a of r of x. That would be the same thing as plugging r into the a equation. You mean this r right here, plugging it into the a equation? It almost seems like the natural thing to do. So let's do it. We end up with pi, but not r squared. No, no, we end up with a half of x squared. 
When you do function composition, it's like you're changing the variable. It's also like you're putting the two equations together. And so now we end up with an equation that, when they're put together, can be written as 1 fourth x squared. By the way, I squared 1 half to get 1 fourth, but I, of course, also squared x. Now, you could write this as pi over 4. It would just be a nice little way to kind of put those two equations together. What is that equation? I'm so glad you asked. What is that equation? Do you remember where the equation came from? It came from pi r squared. Do you still see that it's pi r squared? The only difference is that it's in terms of x. So this is the area of this circle. It's the area of this circle given the length or the dimension of the square. It's the area of the circle using the square dimension. That's exactly what we're going to do in question D. Question D is going to be to find the area, find the area when the base is an 8 by 8. It's actually almost too easy. You're just going to plug 8 into your new equation because 8, of course, equals x and the area is going to be pi over 4 x squared. Yeah, I kind of skipped the whole radius thing. I skipped thinking about the radius. I just, I'm able to just plug in uh, the x value. So 8 squared is 64. We get 64 pi over 4. Of course, if you can simplify something, you should. So we end up with 16 pi. You could turn it into a decimal if you want to, but I just want you to realize that that is actually the area of the circle, 16 pi. Okay, and of course that'd be the, the, uh, the, the size of the tank that I could put on there. At least that'd be the area of, of the bottom of the tank. All right, function operations. Now it's your turn. Go ahead with the homework, and we'll see you next time.